Hey guys, what's up? My name is Rachel. Welcome back to Oxheart Gardening. And today I was potting up my tomato seedlings and thinking about the question of why do homegrown tomatoes taste better? Um, I've looked into it because I thought it was a really interesting question. And I just wanted to talk to you guys about some of the reasons that people say that they taste better and some of the reasons I found that nobody really talks about that I think also really affect the flavor of tomatoes. Now you're gonna hear this about a lot of things that are not tomatoes. Um, homegrown produce in general, people will say tastes better. Um, but tomatoes specifically, since I am potting them up and they are also one of the ones that people reference the most often when they're talking about this. Um, there's two main reasons that people give for why homegrown tomatoes taste better. Um, the first is freshness. You are growing it at home. You get to you get to pick it at its uh, right when it's ripe, and you get to go eat it immediately, um, as opposed to having to even just drive to the grocery store and take it home, or to the farmer's market where it's picked earlier in the day. Um, you get to take it directly out of your garden and put it in your mouth if you want to. The other reason that people talk about for why homegrown tomatoes taste better is variety. Um, people will say that commercial tomatoes are bred to be uh, good at being stored. They're bred to be round and uniform and uh, sometimes large uh, without too much regard for the taste. Um, and so you're more likely to get a tasty tomato that is an heirloom variety, for example, than a commercial variety. So I took these two claims and I did what I do. I went into PubMed, looked up some of the research, read some of the research on tomatoes and flavor and all of these things, and come up with a couple of different uh, interesting pieces of information to share with you. So when we're talking about tomatoes and what does it mean for a tomato to taste better, um, I wanted to kind of nail that down so that I could look at um, these specific factors when it comes to determining if a certain tomato tastes better. Um, and there, it comes down to two main factors, um, the sugar content and the acid content of that tomato. Um, so these are the two things I was looking for when I was like trying to figure out if homegrown or commercial grown produce tastes better. And so it turns out that you want high sugar content and high acid content both together to have a really tasty tomato according to, you know, the people who taste tomatoes and determine if they taste good or not, I guess. So let's start with variety. Um, does the variety of tomato make a big difference in how uh, tasty it is? Um, it turns out that there's actually quite a lot of research on um, commercial varieties, but not a whole lot on uh, heirloom varieties, as you might expect. You know, the sorts of people who want research on tomatoes are the ones who are growing them commercially. Um, but it is very clear from the research that uh, different tomato types have different nutrient profiles. Um, and there's this one uh, study I could find, I think Baker Creek funded it, um, and they looked at a bunch of different heirloom tomatoes and compared it to a uh, vine ripened uh, commercial variety. And the interesting thing about that is that the commercial variety did not even score the lowest on either the sugar content or the acid content. And the differences even between some of the heirloom varieties were like really quite large. Um, so the variety does matter quite a bit, but I'm not really sure if you can just blanket statement say that all commercial varieties are going to taste worse. And then when we get into talking about freshness, um, different tomatoes will, their um, flavor profile will evolve over time um, as they are in storage. Um, and so some tomatoes store better than others and end up with a better nutrient profile after storage. Some have a better nutrient profile when picked fresh. Um, and I'll link that study below as well. Um, so in addition to variety mattering, the specific freshness 
of varieties um, will change which one tastes better if they're both the same age even. They could have tomato A tasting better when fresh and tomato B tasting better like a week later. And so that gets a little bit into freshness, right? How um, fresh the tomato is actually mattering in its flavor profile. And something to understand about commercially grown tomatoes is they're usually picked at two different stages of ripeness. They're either picked uh, unripe or green and then artificially ripened with ethylene gas um, as they're either in transit to where they're going or in storage or something like that. And then um, you'll also see tomatoes picked at what's called the breaker point, which is um, what we call blushing, um, where it's just, just started to turn um, and you can kind of tell by the skin of the tomato and the color of it. And it, from there, it will ripen on its own on your counter without additional ethylene gas. And so it does make a difference if the tomato is picked underripe. The sugar content tends to be less in the underripe tomatoes. Um, but then you'll also have a bunch of people arguing about whether or not picking it fully ripe, like on the vine versus at the breaker point and letting it ripen off the vine makes a huge difference. And so interestingly, um, there is a chemical difference between tomatoes that are ripened on the vine versus off the vine, even if they're picked past the breaker point. Um, but it might not make any difference to taste. Um, this one study that I'll link had a hundred panel, a hundred person panel of judges tasting these tomatoes. And um, the vine ripening didn't really seem to make a big difference in how they were rating the tomatoes. Uh, which I think is very interesting because they did find really, like, really concrete, like chemical differences between the two. So like, I guess it technically does make a difference, um, but it might not make a difference to you with a human taste palate. <laughs> so in addition to those factors that are affecting the taste of your tomatoes, um, there are some other factors that um, aren't really talked about in the discussion of homegrown versus commercial grown. Um, and one of the big ones is environment. Um, growing in a hotter climate or a drier climate um, seems to result in a less sweet tomato. Um, this one study found that the ideal balance, if it's going to be hot, would be to have a humidity of around uh, 70%, um, which is actually kind of like my climate. Um, so if you are growing homegrown tomatoes in like a hot and dry environment, you might be finding that they don't actually taste that much better than the store. Um, and that could be why, because I know some people argue that they've tried and they're like, yeah, homegrown doesn't really taste better for me. I think maybe climate has something to do with it. And then the other thing would be the actual, um, soil health that you are living in. Um, as always, something that isn't really talked about is, uh, mycorrhizal networks. These are networks of um, mushrooms that go under the soil and interact with plant roots and uh, they have this entire like trading system economy where they'll trade nutrients back and forth um, and tomatoes grown with mycorrhizal networks actually um, tend to have more biomass and be more nutritious than those grown without. Um, and we all know that commercial fields are very likely to till and there is research showing that tilling can um, actually kill and decrease the health of mycorrhizal networks existing in the soil. So I think that that could be a pretty big factor in the flavor of tomatoes that people don't really talk about when they're discussing the commercial versus homegrown uh, style of growing. It's also important to think about um, the kind of stress that your plant is going to undergo in the environment. Um, tomatoes actually do better with a little bit of stress um, and that can be shown. They actually will have um, higher sugar content and higher vitamin C actually among other things. Um, there's just It's just about finding that balance of what is the right amount of um, stress to give your plant and I, I don't know the answer to that question. I do not know how stressed out your plant needs to be for optimal nutrition um, but having a tiny bit stressed out plant can help. And the argument here is that um, organic growers specifically that aren't using um, as many pesticides, uh, those plants will be subjected to more pest stress and might produce sweeter tomatoes. So 
that is something to consider. And lastly, the overall um, health of your soil, like the actual nutrient content of your soil does play a role in how that tomato comes out because it can only, that plant can only work with what you're giving it in the soil. And um, the research I'm linking below shows that um, higher potassium and phosphorus concentrations in your soil can make better tasting tomatoes. Um, whereas maybe having too much nitrogen, um, a lot of synthetic fertilizers are high in nitrogen because it makes plants grow really fast. But having too much nitrogen um, can actually hurt the taste of your tomatoes. Um, so again, very interesting. I cannot expand that too much more into like, how should you apply this to your specific garden because the actual ratios are still um, kind of being explored and it's kind of new research. I think it's um, 2020 or 2022 research that's showing that, um, but I hope they explore it more and I think it's really interesting uh, concept to think about. I don't think I personally would um, bother too much with really specific ratios of nutrients in my soil as long as I'm like adding a ton of organic matter and compost and things like that. I kind of feel like things are going to work themselves out. So to recap, um, we have said that variety makes a difference, but not necessarily in a binary heirloom is always better way. It definitely does make a difference which variety you're growing and what taste you're going to get out of it. Um, freshness does also make a difference, but perhaps uh, picking at first blush versus uh, on the vine ripening doesn't matter so much as far as taste goes. Um, we've also determined that the environment that your tomatoes are grown in massively affects them. How hot it is, how dry it is, things like that. The soil health, also a big factor. Um, and mycorrhizal networks, also probably a pretty big factor. And uh, anyone who's been on the channel with me for a while knows that I am wildly fascinated by deep diving into this stuff and seeing what people are researching, how they're researching it, and kind of trying to tie that all together into what it is that I want to know as a home gardener. Because as I said before, often the research is not very focused on home gardening because that's not where the money is. People don't really care that much because the outcome of that research doesn't affect these large corporations that are making a lot of money. However, I'm willing to sit there and sort through it and read it and kind of try and digest it and give it back to you in a way that you can understand because uh, I recognize that there is this issue where not everybody can read research like that and actually make sense of it. Um, and I'm, I wouldn't say lucky, but I do have, I did spend the time getting a degree in um, physics and master's in bioengineering so I can read that stuff. I am really hoping to do more content like this in the future, so if you think that knowing all of that stuff is super interesting, um, let me know. If you have other interesting questions like this that you want explored, leave those in the comments below. Um, and if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, I will see you next time, whenever that is. Um, but for now, I will leave playlists up here of stuff that I think you're really going to enjoy. Until next time, guys, happy gardening!